my exposure to free to play, my real exposure that, that hooked me started when, and now I'm going to bring him up in a good context, when Stephen Totillo, who is the editor-in-chief of Kotaku, and Ngai Kroll, who now runs a company called Hit Detection, at the time he was a writer for Newsweek, were telling me that their game of the year, and I'm almost sure this is 2007, was a game called Desktop Tower Defense. And so I asked what it was, and Totillo said something to the effect of, it's too hard for you, you know, you old geezer, you'll never be able to play it. And I said, oh, come on, I'm pretty good at games. He goes, my wife could kick your ass in this game. So the funny thing was that they had a little tag, I don't, I don't even know what you call it, it was like a little group that you could join. So I could play and the leaderboard would just be the people in their group. So I could see Tatillo's score and Engai's score, and I forgot Steven's wife's name, but his wife's score. Um, I not only ended up, and his wife was the best of the three of them, by the way. I not only ended up beating his wife's score, but I doubled his wife's score, and then I made it onto the national leaderboard. I actually was in like 17th for a while. Uh, then some hacker came in and, and you know, posted a perfect score like 20 times just to wipe all of us off. But I love this game. So I got into desktop tower defense. That kind of consumed a lot of my time in 2007 and 8. And then I stopped playing it. And I found myself at an event in it's 2013 now, so probably 2011. And I was talking to this dude, uh, Brandon Barber, who works for Kixi. And I knew Kixi, and I'm like, you know, Battle Pirates and Backyard Monsters, and I'd heard of these games, and I think they have others, but, but they have like four. Um, and I was just asking him, you know, like, who are the Kixi guys? Like, I'd heard of Will Harbin, who's the president, but I'm like, where are they? He goes, well, it's Paul Priest is the chief designer. And I go, Paul Priest, who made Desktop Tower Defense, my favorite game ever, the one I was on the leaderboards for? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, well, he made Backyard Monsters, which is very much in the style of Desktop Tower Defense, and you, uh, you, you'll see it. Um, and he goes, you should play the game, but I'm warning you now, if you have an addictive personality, you get into it. And I did. And I actually didn't understand uh, how intricate and involved this very simple game was. And I was playing it like a single player game. So in this single player game, you build out your yard, it's a backyard, and you populate it with monsters that you need to develop resources to get. And you have your monsters and you get attacked randomly by wild other monster tribes. And it's wild, it's not real people, so it's player versus environment. And you build up your defenses and it's a tower defense game. And then you get to a certain level, and I, it's been so long, it's been a couple of years, I think level 30 or so, 35, something like that. You get thrown out in the real world and there are other players. Well, you can attack them, but I didn't because there were plenty of wild things to attack that were part of the, you know, the game, not people. So I'm the guy who never attacks anybody else. Uh, and I'll give you an aside, I buy my wine at auction. I never bid on anything if somebody else has bid because I don't want to ruin their day. It's like they bid $35 on the bottle, I'm not going to bid 40 and take the bottle away from them, let them have it. So I'm that guy, that's how I play. I don't want to take somebody else's stuff unless they're mean to me. So I'm building myself up and I remember I got to level 47. So I played it for a while, three months, that's about how long it takes to get to level 47, three months. I built up all sorts of cool stuff. I had all these wild outposts that I took over, so I had lots of resources coming in. They got about 100 outposts. And I woke up one morning and I log on. I'm gonna just find five more outposts today, you know, whatever. And I had zero outposts, and my main yard was flattened. And there's something called attack log, so I went to the attack log, and these three Spanish dudes took all my stuff. I clicked on one of them and I messaged him, and I'm like, Why'd you take your stuff? And my stuff. And the answer was, because that's how the game's played. So I went to another one, I'm like, why'd you take my stuff? And the guy's like, you know, he felt bad for me. So he was kind of explaining to me how you play the game and you're supposed to get in a in a in an alliance, you know, and if you're in an alliance, then people won't attack you because all your alliance mates will fight back. And I'm like, wow. I don't start fights ever, I finish them. Yeah. Always. So I actually get mad in this game. And the funny thing was, these three Spanish dudes uh, that, that I started out with, if they hadn't have been nice to me, I would have spent however much money it takes and taken all my shit back. I would have spent 500 bucks 
and taken all my shit back from them. I would, I, I would have, because if you spend enough money, you can kick anybody's ass in anything. Um, but they were nice, so I didn't. And they were patient, and they explained to me that's how it's played. And I was like, okay, I get it now. I didn't know. It's not, not like there's a tutorial. I didn't realize there was more than one world. I thought I was just in my one little world. So I'm kind of building back my strength. I get in an alliance. We didn't attack. Nobody, it wasn't coordinated at all. Just somebody let me in. I was fine. They left me alone for a while. And eventually, somebody approached me, because I got myself up to like level 56, which looks like the top level in the game. It turns out there's a 57, which I just got to. Um, and somebody approached me, Srikar, and he's like, would you like to join our alliance? So I'm like, OK, but I'm not exactly sure how all this stuff works. And that was about a year ago. So I've been playing the game a year. And I joined his alliance, and it turns out I'm really good at attacking other people and taking all their shit. So uh, I find out that there's plenty of worlds. So it's just this random thing that Srikar was in my world. And Srikar taught me how to jump to other worlds. There are over 300 worlds in this game. There are over 6 million active players, monthly actives in this game. Um, and it turns out there's a ton of alliances, and it's bloodlust. People hate each other, love each other, whatever. And so we're in one of the powerful alliances. So you see on the map, that's me. That's my picture from John Finger. It says I'm a 56, but I'm 57, which pisses me off. Um, I'm in touch and burn SWAT, which is actually the tactical strike team. It's fun. Um, I've got all these 50s. Uh, Randy's got a 30. I can't attack 20, so these are wild. Those are wild names. Le Legionnaire, Abenaki, and Kozu are the three wilds. I'm pretty much all around here except for this one. So let's take Randy out. And Randy's jumping to another world to go to war so I can take his thing. So there's, there's his yard. i got to take this thing out. So I hit attack. And now the timer starts, you'll see. So the timer's going 457. I'm going to use a small amount of pebbles. And I'm at a, I'm, right now I'm taking out an aerial defense tower. That thing right there is an aerial defense tower. And that, those number of pebbles will take one out. I can't use pebbles twice in the same attack, so I'll use 5 million twigs. And I'm taking out the other aerial defense tower. You can move this stuff around if you really feel like it, but they're always in the same place until somebody moves it. Then I'm going to send all my monsters that I think can do the most damage quickly. So I'm sending all my flying guys, my big eating guy, my big uh, my FOMOR will make everybody work a little harder. And just for good measure, I'm going to send my underworld monsters, because what the hell, I'll come in. My work kills Flash. Let's hope it doesn't crash. And we'll see. You know, I'll go back to where you can see it happen. Sorry. Now, I will say, in a, when I'm not running in full screen and I'm running this at home in high speed, it takes me uh, 50 seconds to take this thing out. But I'm running in full screen, and my, and my work uh, VPN just destroys it. So it took me a minute and 12 before this came up. I entered the outpost because I took everything down. And now I've got 120 damaged buildings. I start repairing them in about, what we can see, uh, 41 minutes. That has 41 minutes to go. This will all be repaired. That's 39 minutes. Just see if anything's longer now. Nah. So yeah, the, that's 31. So in 41, 41 minutes, everything in here is going to be fixed. I, it says here, I'm collecting 43 million 797,000 an hour. I was collecting 18,000 less than that an hour because this level outpost is worth 18,000 per hour. Um, the next one up is worth 40, the next one up is worth 82, and you take as many of these as you can. And as I said, we have highly coordinated attacks. I mean, we did one attack where it was two weeks in the planning. We were told we were going to attack, and I remember the date. It was July 24th at 9 a.m. New York time. And the funny thing is the leader of that particular thing lives in Huntington Beach, so he's a West Coast guy, but he picked East Coast time. Um, because everybody in Europe could translate New York time into their local time. And he said, at exactly 9 o'clock, I, the guy who's leading it, his name is Chip, I'm going to jump to where we're going. And so at 9 o'clock and 10 seconds, all of you, friend me on Facebook, all of you jump there too. And I don't know the number, but I guess about 100 of us went, maybe, maybe 150. 
Um, it normally takes about three or four days to win a war and take over a world, two hours. We took a world out in two hours. And the funny, it was that's when we were enemies with the Philippine guys, the P PSA. So the Philippines, uh, Seoul's uh, allied, those guys are pretty much in the Philippines. I mean, I'm sure that there are non-Filipino members, but they're, if you look at their names, they're all like Filipino names. And uh, I asked why nine o'clock, and he goes, because it's a weekday, and that's 11 p.m. in the Philippines. And pretty much in the Philippines, like, you know, people with computers all have jobs, and they are done at 11 o'clock and they go to bed. So the funny thing was, you could see, there were like two of them playing, and there were 100 of us. And the two guys, what do you do? Because like, if we get attacked, I don't have the phone numbers of the guys that I'm playing with. I can't contact them any way other than Facebook. So it's like, shit. So we just took them out. And, and we were so organized, like they had all the levels of everybody who were taken out and how many resources they had. They'd gone, so they'd scouted the world and counted everything. And they're like, here's the top four guys, wipe them out to zero first. Because you know? if they're wiped out to zero, then they're not generating this 40 million. And if they don't, if they haven't amassed, like I literally never joined a war until I had 30 billion in resources. And I didn't know what it takes. To, to attack, but the answer is it takes five to six billion, and most players aren't as organized as we are, and they don't have it. So we attack Chip, Chip, the guy who led that one attack. I remember he said, I have two billion in resources. He kept running out of resources, but I, I never do. So I have 100 billion, because I never do. And I've gotten up to where I was generating three billion a day. I, and you know that it only takes a month, and you get 100 billion. So why not? I'm generating a billion a day, maybe I'll go to 200 billion before I attack again. Fun game. I, and I never trash talk anyway, because it's stupid, but I get these trash talk things. You know, I, like I'm a level 57, as I told you up here. I had some level 36 dweeb who's like, we're gonna put some hurt on you. And I was just <laughs> like, I so wanted to reply, like, you know, bring it on, you little fucker. But I didn't, because it's like, it's like, you're a level 36, you can't. Like, don't even talk. You know, but it was like, because he, it was like the 12-year-old the punk, you know, on the street, with, standing with the two, you know, six foot five, you know, 250 pound guys next to him. He's pretty brave. This guy was like, yeah, me and my, my buds are gonna take you out. And I'm like, so what I did was, I went on our chat room and I go, this third level 36 little dweeb is trash talking me. Um, one of the fair things about the game, you cannot attack anybody, anybody's main yard unless they're within 10 points of your ranking. So I'm a 57, I can only attack 47s and above. This guy's a 36, so I can't even attack him. So I'm, I'm like, is there anybody here who's like a level 46 or below? And like two people go, I am, and I go, here's the coordinates, take him out. And they did. <laughs> that's the better, that's the better uh, revenge. You know, just like, I go, flatten his yard and keep it flat. So, you know, two hours later, he went and attacked somebody, and they flattened him again. And they did it for a week. And the guy obviously didn't have any money, so he's not going to spend any money to do it. He didn't play for a week because he trash-talked me. But that's better than trash-talking him back, don't you think? I now have, uh, I think I'm, I'm certainly tied for the most powerful guy in the game. Um, I'm still kind of the guy who would rather not attack somebody but what's fun about this game is when you're at war with somebody, you don't have to wait because they'll attack you, and I have no problem getting them back. No problem at all. So somebody attacks me, I take all their shit. I don't take back what they took from me, I take everything back. But I make them start it first, it's really fun. Um, it's a great game, we play it a lot. There are hackers in the game that cheat, which is really fun, because uh, it's really obvious when you play the game. But it is a full-time job for a lot of people. It is amazing. My alliance is very cool. Uh, we have about probably 200 members. And the 200 members are pretty evenly spread throughout the world. So we have a bunch in Europe. We have a bunch in India. We have a bunch in Philippines, Singapore, uh, and I think like Hong Kong, Taiwan. Um, so we span the globe and we are able to kind of have our wars populated 24 seven because there's always somebody who's kind of watching out. The camaraderie is amazing. I mean, it's like you, you really feel like, you know, when you take back some virtual crap from somebody who stole your virtual crap, 
you know, you feel good about it. And when you help your friend take back his virtual crap, you feel really good about it. It's a silly, silly game, but uh, we all are proud to be in our alliance and we have a, we have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm very fortunate because I'm able to spend money in the game, but the construct of the game is brilliant. Uh, essentially, money buys you time. So you have monsters to attack. If you don't use them perfectly, and it's hard, so they get injured occasionally. And when they get injured, they have to heal. And if you're in the heat of battle and you want to take them back to war, you've got to heal them. You either have to wait time, which typically is 15 minutes, but if, depending on the level of damage, if it's two hours, you're stuck. Um, or you spend money to heal them. And same thing, you know, if you need your weapons, you gotta heal them if you need to, to defend your yard. So one of the tactics in the game is that players invade the other player's main yard and destroy everything so that their monsters are all incapacitated and, and they're pretty much out of commission for two hours. And guys like me, I spend a buck and I go back and I kick their ass instantly because I don't care. I, I, revenge matters more to me than a dollar. So the Backyard Monster guys love me because I think I've spent literally 300 bucks so far in this game and I'm not done. Uh, so I'm, I guess I'm a whale because I'm 300 bucks just in the last year and I would spend 300 more because I like kicking people's butt who take my shit, so don't take my shit or I'll kick your butt. If you have a question for me, you can submit it to the link below. If you'd like to ask me a question on Twitter, send it to at Michael Pactor, copy at Game Trailers and apply the hashtag AskPack and we will answer every question we can get to. I will send you a direct message and answer your question directly if you follow me on Twitter, at Michael Pachter. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, but pretty much everybody, Fouad is one of my boys, touch and burn SWAT. He's a little kid, it looks like. Uh, or else that is his little kid. I'm guessing that's his little kid. Um, but a lot of us play in here. Abishek, one of my boys, Touch and Burn. These are all my boys. Guillerme, one of my boys, Touch and Burn Slayers. We're everywhere.